Okay, this is me live streaming, um, but it will save it. So let's. Uh, what we're going to try and do here is hunt and destroy John James Reed. He's apparently in Sol Dumata and Ross 154. He's probably going to be a big guy, and I've got 24 hours to kill him in. I didn't manage to kill some of these other people, so we can discard those. They'll go away. Still got some stuff. I need to pop over to the Alliance to claim those back, but whatever. Doesn't matter. So, for now, I'm in Broly Terminal. Um, I'm, this is 61 Signy. I'm not a million miles away from Sol. Actually, that's a lie. I'm very much more than a million miles away from Sol. Uh, but also Ross 154. And I'm going to go search for him in Ross 154. Because then he might say, oh no, we saw him in Sol. And that will be fun. Now, before we go, let's double check to make sure we've got all the gear we need. I think I repaired. Yep, that's good. Fully repaired. Everything's looking good. Fuel tank's good. Reserve is good. Not going to worry about any missions. So let's just launch. Whilst we're launching, checking that the engine has maximum pips. Four pips into engines. You know, systems for shields, weapons for shooting, and engines. What I've also done for the Twitch stream is for my friend Chris, I've added in the SciTech X52 Pro Flight Controller um, and pushed it engaged. to the bottom corner so we can see what I'm actually moving to make things happen. Woo! Too much on the uh, on the thrusting. Oh, this is this is just 100% smooth right here. Look at that. That's just perfect. Just drop the volume a bit. Okay, so clearly I know how to fly a Viper, as you can see. Anyway, we're clear of mass lock. Frameshift drive charging. We'll warp over to Ross 154. Normally when I warp in somewhere, I'll go straight to the nav beacon and start blowing up pirates. But I'm not, just in case I need to preserve my ammo. I'm just going to start cruising Three, for two, uh, one, unidentified signal sources and see what I can find. So heading over there, dropping the Zalexis down to the first detente. Uh, detente, I think that's the right word. Um, this sounds like something diplomatic to me. So anyway, here I'll just scoop up some fuel to make sure I can fuel um, and then just keep an eye on the temperature and also keep an eye out for USSs. There's one now, let's go check it out. So apparently it's uh, there and the star is not that, the star's further away. The star is 122 and the USS is 15. That's still I don't really want to get close enough to get that. I think I'll ignore that one. <laughs> it's a little bit too close for comfort. Uh, any others, I'd gladly go for. Let's unlock that one right now. And we're at our... Ma oh, there's one. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. So, I'm taking some damage because of heat. But I'm currently boosting away. So we're at 95% hull because of that Muppetry. Oh well. We're better now. This is good. I'll get out of here in a second. But let's just take stock. So at the moment, we'll look for any kind of identified signal source. We're looking for John James Reed. There are no contacts in range. Over on this side, we have a uh, jump range of 14 light years, and everything's looking good. No cargo on board. Fire groups is gimbaled, multi cannons all the way, and a kill warrant scanner. The shield cell bank is bound to the first MFD button on my SciTech. That's um, number 32 over there. Um, and in terms of modules, how I group them is number one is ship systems, number two is weapon systems, and number three is everything I don't need. So if I deploy my hard points now, 
all the number threes go offline, which is the cargo hatch, the frame shift drive, and the fuel scoop, because I can't frame shift when the weapons are out, I can't fuel scoop when the weapons are out, and why would I ever want a cargo hatch to have power to it when I'm fighting anyway? So those three are five, three, and two percent. So I've got a 10% usage buffer, and my usage is 108, so I've got a 2% leeway. Looking at the status for a second, doing pretty good, currently still a recruit with the Federation, not doing too bad there. Um, the insurance claim to rebuild is 110,000 because this is a seriously upgraded Viper, and I am a combat ranking of expert with 738 bounties claimed and 3.3 million credits, plus a couple of assassinations. Um, but let's, I don't, I think I've gotten more than that from before. Comply. Oh yeah disabled it. Let's put those away. Give ourselves a boost. Frameship drive charging. Find the uh, escape vector. Hopefully the heat won't to engage. give us any more Two, damage. One. Engage. And let's go searching for some US assets. Fuel scooping. And also some fuel scoopings as we leave that area. Because we want to avoid fuel the heat. Disengaged. Now, in terms of USSs, I generally, like, you can fly around and try and find them, or you can occasionally glance at this screen to see what's going on. Um, but what I haven't really tried is just staring at the screen all the time. Maybe that's a better way of doing it. Maybe you know vaguely what direction you're going in. Move around a bit, you know, like, line up with that lateral plane. Move up and down it and just look. I don't know. Maybe you're crashing into a planet. Okay, so uh, again, this is the more contemplative side of Elite Dangerous Combat, where you're looking for USSs around the place. Um, maybe the trick is to pick one of the locations and fly towards it. Oh, it's back the other way. Still looking for USSs on the way. Astors through the other side. There's one now. Okay, so we have a USS cruising towards it. As always, we're probably slightly too fast, even though we've slowed ourselves down. I found that in Gamma 1 in particular, it was very good about getting the, the relative speeds right. Like if you left it in the middle of the blue, you'd be fine. But now I'm finding that especially for these closer ones, I will often overshoot if I don't manually slow myself down. I can't really strike a happy balance. I wish I could just set it to one and have it logarithmically decrease as I got closer, uh, rather than stuttery as I feel it goes now. But there's a part of which you're making good progress and then you're either overshooting it or you're going too slow. It doesn't seem smooth right now. Like now, it's it's like, you know, it's seven seconds and it's staying at seven seconds until I get there. And if I pushed it a little bit faster, it would start reducing. But at some point, it's going to say, slow down. But I actually think I'm going to be okay with this one. Let's see what it says. But it's still, it's, you know, more than seven seconds to get there. There we go, there's our slow down. But I think we're going to be okay. And there's our disengage. So let's see what we've got. Throttle to zero, it's a hauler. Does the hauler have anything to say to us? Let's deploy our systems. Did you hear, he says. Look at that. That crazy terrorist has been spotted. Which one? That John James, he's gone to a cloud hen to Wise 8550714. So that, right there, is going to be our next destination. Frameshift drive and charging. that's where we're going to go and fight the bad guy. He's going to be in a USS somewhere in that system, and that's where we're going to try and take him down. Four, three, two, one, engage. get any uh, 
not going to get any fuel off of that. So let's just get around here. Uh, so we do have a landing pad, which is good. And a USS right there, which is nice. Um, the landing pad's going to be useful to get fuel to get back to Sol, uh, because I can't get it off the star. But we'll see. If I got really stuck, I would look at the the map, see the closest that I could jump to, and go scoop some fuel from a close one. But in the meantime, let's get our way over here. Definitely going too fast for this now, I reckon. Let's just kill the, the speed right back. And we're there. All right. The Fed. Uh, okay, so two Feds. Scan detected. And a bad guy, possibly. He's wanted. That's awesome. I love this. He's like, what do you carry, I wonder? And there's a bunch of feds around. And he's wanted. How do I make a living? Oh, because of you guys. Target destroyed. And they're all unknown. They're, they're all feds as well, so that was easy. Oops. Wait a second, and then do that. Drive so, uh, I think Four, I was still locked three, on to two, Aster one, or one of the resource engage. areas. Let's, let's play catch up. Let's go back to that one. Uh, give us a lock on back this way. And in the meantime, still looking for any kind of USS. If I had a basic discovery scanner, I would see these things, but I do not. So, what I'm what I'm hoping to do is get an adder, get it out as an explorer, explore all of the systems around Sol, so that when I jump to them for missions, I'm hoping in my Viper I actually can see the planets. Anyway, we'll see if that works. As always, there's there's several coming out now, but we'll we'll see if this one is good for us. I've got my little USB foot pedal bound to J so that when I get close enough I can tap the J key with my foot. Come out of jump space. There we go. Oh, it's John James Reed. This is it, people. And he says, fear me. So the first thing we're doing is regardless of whatever he's doing we're selecting the power plant and I'm using that using the slider so I have the power plant selected um, I'm gonna do full pips to weapons he's, that was a plasma accelerator he just fired at me so the game is afoot um, I finished a K warrant scan so now his ass is mine and I say that like this is going to be easy. He is elite. But also he's decided to let me shoot up his tailpipe right now. Going for a lateral thrust to try and get down and behind him. Sideways is also good. Gimbal's working overtime here. Let's push it a bit to get past him. There we go. Oh, he's, uh, I think it's letting me get behind him here. Not bad. Still trying to push the laterals to get behind him, not having to use flight assist right now. Got a re reload situation. Oops, there we go. Sometimes with the laterals it pushes the gimbal locking off. And his shield's just about to go off. Okay, so now I'm basically pounding his power bomb. 
taking a few hits, looking at my shields. When I get down to that first ring, we'll see what we have to do. He's going to try and flip around now. He's got enough distance away. He's still using laterals to move away. I'm trying to avoid those. He's almost at the limit of my uh, my cannon range. Oh, now he thinks he has to escape. Which usually signals that he's going to come this way. And I really want to boost past him. Use flight assist off to turret in space. Turn it back off and go back for it again. Yeah. Time to boost up the shields. He's coming for a head on. Give myself some spins. I'm still taking a battering. Assist. Oh. Assist. Oh man, that is hurting. Another shield bank used. And they're already... Oh, and he's down. Target Fantastic. Destroyed. That's just excellent. So now if we come over here and look at this, um, I need to go back to Sol to uh, re retrieve that. But the other thing was, I already got... Um, 44,000 just by killing him. So let's let's complete the thing by jumping back, just putting the uh, the weapons away, and then engage. Drive charging. And I believe that was at Burnell Station above. Um, Venus. Four, so let's three, jump over there and two, one, engage. say hi to the homestead. So that was two shield banks used, two shield bank cells used to recharge the, the shields. The multi cannons took a while to strip down the, uh, the shields, but strip it down they did. Fuel scooping. And then it was a case of, t with the t power plant targeted and just powering stuff in there, I just fenced with him, basically, backwards and forwards a few times, um, until he started panicking, and then I was able to take out his his power plant. There have been times where, I, where his hull has been, like, my target Anaconda's hull has been at, like, 70%, and I've just managed to get the right angle on the power plant, and just decimate it, and it's been very satisfying, but at the same time, you know, it's, it still takes me one, possibly two of the, um, of the fuel cells, the shield cells, sorry, to, to do enough damage, uh, to, you know, soak up enough damage to, to give them enough damage. Alright, he's almost at 150, time to get away from here, but we have almost got three quarters of a tank of fuel. Fuel scoop disengaged. We won't be able to gain significant speed until we get out of the gravity well of Sol, which we just did because it went from blue to red. I always try to angle down because I feel that getting out of the overall gravity well of the uh, of the system makes a difference, maybe? I don't know. But it's also better to come at some of these systems from underneath because they you you get to see a a ring based system. Sorry, I, what I mean is you get to see the stations circling the planets from below, which gives you a, a better trajectory into them. Uh, looking at the scanner, I'm not seeing anybody um, with a hollow circle, so there doesn't seem to be any uh, any commanders around. But I haven't rebound my second mouse to, to be able to tell that. There we go. Still can't see anybody. But yeah, as, as I was saying, from here you can see that I'm coming at Venus from basically below, you know, like from a relative position. And it means I can see exactly which side the station's on. I usually roll so that I'm this way around. And now on the blue we should be able to steam in there. I will, I will dock and show you 
you know, like I clearly have a bounty to to receive. Wait, where's my bounty gone? Oh, there it is. Okay, so that was the bounty I just got, the forty-two thousand for killing him, which is, you know, that's that's significant in itself. That's not a bad bounty. Um, but we'll see what we get from that kill mission as well. Oh, that was cool. Okay, there we go. We're clear. Bernal Station is, you know, kind of adorable because it's the only platform rather Docking than request granted. space station in the salt system. Which also means that you can cruise into it even if you're wanted. Successful. All right. Engines disengaged. Head to the hangar so that we don't hog a platform and go see what Starport Services said. So there we go. That's our hunter hire, and we're going to get 138. So that's a hunt. So we're going from 1.285 million to 1432. Plus we had the um, that bounty on it of 42. Which takes me nicely to nearly one point, well, nearly one and a half million now, which is not bad. And I think, you know, what I hear is you can get higher using trading, but this is still hella fun, you know. Really enjoyed it. Um, that didn't take too long, and, you know, three grand in, uh, in bullets, basically, for the multi cannons. Um, and I do enjoy the multi cannons, like, the multi cannons are super fun right now. But what I'm what I'm rocking in here is a a C type kill warrant scanner, and that C type skill, kill warrant scanner um, uses um, quite a lot of juice. Like it uses um, uh, 0.8 of a power draw, where I think some of the other ones. Like, I mean, yeah, like the the A class one. I had that one installed one time. 3.2 megawatts. It you know you you could stick it in an anaconda or something. It would, uh, but I had it in here and I popped it out and a B class one and they're like you don't have enough power to turn anything on right now. I had to really jiggle things around and then I wasn't being able to use my multi cannons. So C is the absolute highest. If I went to a D mul uh, kill warrant scanner, um, they all they all take ten seconds to scan. It doesn't matter whether it's A or B or C or D. It's ten seconds. So what I believe what I've read on the forums is they will get you more of a bounty or they will get you a bounty from more multiple different systems whether that's the case or not I don't know if I took this C down to a D or an E I could be able to fit um, back to the, the the lasers pew 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 but one of the things that I would like to do with this uh, and I don't think this one has them is you know forget the beam lasers beam lasers are way too uh, energy useful I would like um, class 2 burst lasers and class 1 burst lasers but there's no class 2 burst lasers there's class 1 and class 2 pulse lasers but I, I don't know what the deal is there maybe I just haven't found them but these multi cannons are good maybe what I should do is is go to um, the fixed ones um, because they are you know a, a rating higher with less power draw and more 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 damage overall um, but we what we haven't seen is like overcharged or shorter range ones um, that we had in the in the betas so far maybe they're coming maybe not but I just really enjoy the multi cannons um, okay but like I say this this I could not pimp this machine out any more than it is um, you know, I've tried having an A-class kill warrant scanner, but there's too much power for this machine. The point defense system is just perfect. Um, what I've heard about chaff launchers, by the way, is that if you are smuggling gear in and you're trying to get inside a station and it says ship scan detected and you launch some chaff, the scan won't complete because it messes up the, the scans. Um, but 
you know, the the I love the ability to just have the point defense system running. The kill warrant scanner is useful for getting more credits, as you as you saw. Multi cannons make me pretend that I'm a colonial viper, and and seeing as my viper is called Kara, you'll probably get the reference. Um, down here, the A1 fuel scoop gives me 42 liters per second, which is good enough, you know, just to have there. The shield cell bank, I used two of those during that fight. That was awesome. The shield generator A3, lovely, lovely piece of kit. Um, cargo rack, as Luke pointed out, means that I can do the the missions that give me rep. I would like to maybe uh, eventually have a shield generator and a shield cell bank that are both A3 and have a, a fuel scoop which is A2 and back to a basic discovery scanner but you know then be a pure interdictor class um, no cargo um, fuel tank C2 is the highest you can get the C1 would give me um, like more jump range but less overall range everything else is an A2 but it still cracks me up that the lightweight alloys that I have are still the loaned ones because of the, sh the, the A3 shield and the A2 shield cell bank I don't really need you know too much in the way of armor the, the last thing I, I uh, live streamed did show a um, uh, me taking 50% hold damage I, I, I don't know why that happened I also think maybe it's time to go back to the shiny one we were gold for a while um, and on Sunday I'm clearly going to be flying the flag <laughs> love that um, but let's let's go chrome for a bit to see what happens and with that said I'm I think I'm gonna you know close off this twitch screen for now and uh, post it up for Chris and the others to see all right thanks everyone see you later <laughs>